So let's get into this idea of using methylene blue in and around cancer care. And we're not going to look at every last permutation of how methylene blue might work and all of the different research and all of that. But I want to take you through the big areas where cancer science and methylene blue are coming together and what that might mean for therapies that might be current and or future. So the first thing is just a quick intro on methylene blue. Methylene blue is a blue dye that is used all over the world and it's used to dye things like fabrics, etc. It's used as a laboratory reagent. But also, methylene blue is one of the oldest or maybe the oldest synthetic drug known to modern humans. There might have been some before, but for what we know in modern medicine, it's been around for hundreds of years, literally. Methylene blue is thought of in emergency medicine, because that's where it's usually used, as a treatment for a particular type of a hemoglobin abnormality where it's given intravenously. It's also used as a surgical dye, sometimes injected, sometimes infused, etc. And it's also used sometimes in neuro surgery to protect the brain because neurosurgery is kind of a little bit dicey for the brain. The first one we talked about was a process called apoptosis, also sometimes referred to as apoptosis. That's how it's spelled. Apoptosis or the apoptotic effect is a complicated effect and it is a house cleaning process in our normal cell biology whereby a cell has signals that say something is not going right here and so we should self-delete sort of, you know, delete ourselves out of the system. And we make abnormal cells every day. So having good apoptotic effect, very, very important. One of the many ways that apoptosis is triggered once the signals to say, okay, we should probably self-delete here are given is through a mechanistic progression of reactive oxygen species generation, and then that helps in the apoptotic self-deletion process that goes on. When we have cells that are in a position where they should be self-deleting through apoptosis, and maybe that cell, let's say it's a cancer cell, and it's developed a little hedge biochemically around the reactive oxygen side of what we're trying to do naturally to have itself delete. And there's many, many of these hedges. We don't need to get into that, but cancer cells can develop those. Sometimes if we put in primers that increase the amount of reactive oxygen activation and then conversion over to breaking through the resistance to apoptosis, we can get more apoptotic effect, more self-deletion of bad cells, cancer cells, and we can have a lower cancer environment. Now, on the preventive end of things, this has a role in that, as I said, we, we make abnormal or precancerous or cancer cells every day. Our body usually knows what to do with them. But in primary prevention or during treatment or in secondary prevention, the maintenance process of apoptosis and the ability to, in a pulsatile manner, use something like methylene blue to trigger an health the apoptotic effect of self-deletion of the cancer cells, it's really important and a potential therapy that we would use in cycles or waves to trigger this type of effect. Now, the next process and the one we wanted to get into at a little deeper level was a mitochondrial cancer therapy. And so if you look at research around what would we most want to target as part of the cells for both preventing cancer, treating cancer, and also preventing cancer reoccurrence, one of the organelles or parts of the cell that we like to target would be mitochondria. The mitochondria normally are there to make the energy for the cell which is very important. So in normal cells, we have usually normal mitochondria, and they go through a particular type of operation and process, and they have very predictable inputs and outputs, the output mainly being energy. In cancer cells, by and large, it's not all cancer cells, but by and large with cancer cells, the mitochondria can be very dysfunctional, and they can be dysfunctional in a way that is a weakening or a target towards the mitochondria. And so if we have a mitochondrial-based therapy, we can target that mitochondrial weakness. Now, the best overall mitochondrial therapies are the ones that have 
two different effects on normal tissue and mitochondria versus cancerous tissue in cancer mitochondria. There are a number of these that we use, and I have used them both in human cancer research, cancer therapies, et cetera, with patients. But when we're looking at them, some of the higher intensity ones are going to damage all the mitochondria, whether it's normal or cancerous. The ones we found that are more, you could say, elegant if from a medical point of view and more helpful, will support normal mitochondrial function in a normal cell and harm abnormal mitochondrial function in a cancer cell. Well, it turns out we didn't realized this for a long time, but it turns out that one of those agents is methylene blue. And so methylene blue has an ability to be a mitochondrial cancer agent where it's going to help your normal tissue stay normal and it's going to help your cancerous tissue be weakened so that other therapies can then take effect in a similar way. So if you think of the cell, you know, like a, a box or a ball or however you've seen them drawn and you look the mitochondria on the inside and they're making this energy. And then we have the cytosol where most of the metabolism goes on. And it turns out then there's a cytosolic or metabolic component to cancer therapy. So the metabolic side is part and parcel with the mitochondrial side. They're just in two different places and then they have crosstalk. Well, if you look at metabolic cancer treatments or the metabolic treatment of cancer, right, there's all sorts of information about manipulating diet or fasting or intermittent fasting or ketosis or exogenous ketones or other stuff. These are all potential metabolic cancer treatments. Well, one of the things that they're trying to do is to try and get inside the cells and to disrupt the cancer cell metabolism in a way that, just like with the mitochondrial part, makes the cancer cell weaker. And the nice thing with these metabolically oriented therapies is, just like the mitochondrial therapy, the me metabolism of most cancer is different from the metabolism of your normal cells. So, for example, if I take a standard cytotoxic chemotherapy, it's going to encounter your normal cells and your cancer cells and the standard cytotoxic chemotherapies are going to damage either one of those cells, normal or cancer. If I do a metabolic therapy, I am going to support your normal cells, just like the mitochondria treatment did, but support your normal cells metabolism and just make it strong and healthy. And I'm going to weaken the cancer cell metabolism may make it weak. Now, it's more complicated than that, but if we combine the prior, essentially, mitochondrial treatment where I'm going to take normal cells and strengthen them mitochondrially and cancer cells and weaken them mitochondrially. And then we add the metabolism part in the metabolic therapy support is going to make your normal cells stronger, cancer cells potentially weaker. We have a one-two combo that methylene blue can do at both the mitochondrial level and also at the metabolism level as well. Now, obviously, it's not just about methylene blue. We're going to be using all sorts of other things to help, but it's really nice to know that methylene blue is sort of this utility player that we can use to support the normal parts of metabolism, mitochondrial function, and then weaken the abnormal parts of cancer, metabolism, and mitochondrial function as well. And then the last thing that I said I would get into and, and was really the fourth one that we talked about in kind of the 10,000 foot view version was the really exciting potential for methylene blue to be both protective and also reparative to to damaged normal tissues. So what do we mean by this? Well, the way that it's being studied primarily in the repair process is we know that we have standard treatments like radiation or chemotherapy, the standard types, that can potentially disrupt cancer cells. But they also, for your normal cells, can create DNA damage and other problems. And if it's a sensitive tissue that has a big job like the kidneys, then we can wind up with trying to harm the cancer and also harming something really important like your kidneys or your heart or something, for example. So we're always looking for ways to recover the damaged parts 
departs from standard cancer care, cancer therapy. Well, it turns out that in the research that we're seeing now in the last, you know, five to seven years before that, but five to seven years especially, that methylene blue has the ability through direct stimulation of parts of the repair process for DNA repair, it has the potential in studies looking at you know, damaged kidney DNA and things like that to help repair, for example, post-chemotherapy damaged DNA in the kidneys. This could also be in your brain or your heart or whatever. And one of the things that helps to keep you healthy after you've treated your cancer is to keep your cells, your normal cells working as well as they possibly can for as long as they can. That makes you live the longest. So if I go through and I've had to have some damaging therapy and now I am, you know, maybe I have a lower cancer burden or I'm in remission, but also my, you know, DNA and my kidneys and my heart and stuff are all bunged up and damaged. If there's a way I can get the DNA to repair in a more normal way and help my kidneys heal and my other tissues heal, I will not only be healthier on the other side of cancer treatment, but I'm more likely to live with better function, better quality of life. And that normally translates to better length of life as we go forward. All right. Well, that was the more micro view of our looking at the areas in cancer research where methylene blue and cancer research are coming together. I hope that answers all of those questions that we got when we put the original video out. And we'll put up some other videos for you to look at here. I want to really thank all the subscribers. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing, like, share, do all the stuff, and I'll see you guys on the next video.